Hey everyone, I'm Robbie Cornthwaite. I'm Daniel Mullen. I'm Angelo Costanza. I'm Marco Flores. I'm Marcelo Garuska. I'm Ian Five. This is Cassio, and you're watching. 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 And you are watching Pure Bread Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. Hi, I'm Daniel Mullen, former Adelaide United player and Asian Champions League winner with Western Sydney Wanderers. When it comes to any of my soccer needs, I do my shopping here at Soccer Locker. An Australian-owned and operated business, the store is located at Shop 5 of 181 to 183 Grange Road, Finden. Founded in 2017, Soccer Locker was introduced into the market to fulfill all the soccer-related needs of Australians, providing a huge range of quality clothing and equipment ranging from soccer balls, team kits, goalkeeper gear, accessories and much more. Recently arrived stock also includes stunning retro kits from some of our favourite past eras as fans of the world game. Soccer Locker is a specialist in Premier Range Boots, Adidas and Puma, goalkeeper gear and licensed merchandise. Visit us online at www.soccerlocker.com.au with free delivery Australia wide. So get shopping now at our Finnan store, open from 10am to 5.30pm from Monday to Friday, and open Saturdays from 9am. Hello and welcome to the Purebred Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. I'm your host, Ellis Gellios. Really, really chuffed to be bringing you this review of our game against the Newcastle Jets. A 2-1 win, a great win, but not a very good performance. Coming to you from the studios of Flow FM, as we have done so often this season, and we are thankful to Flow for allowing us to use these studios. Thanks also to our sponsors, Soccer Locker. Uh, what a win it was against Newcastle Jets. 2-1, the final score. Thanks to a late goal from Hiroshi getting us this fantastic win. Uh, it should be said that the 15-year-old Ira Kunda, uh, what an amazing effort it was from him to step up and score this goal. I really agree with former Reds player Robbie Cornthwaite who came out recently and basically said that um, it couldn't have been anyone else that scored in this game even if you put David Beckham to task when it came to taking this free kick with how pivotal it was in the minute that it was. Uh, it just had to be this unknown, unsung quantity that came on and basically just didn't have any pressure to deliver any kind of expectation. Steps up and absolutely nestles it into the uh, into the left hand corner of the goal, and it was just bonkers. Uh, I I remember watching it in the moment and just being uh, f getting the kind of feeling I haven't got for a, quite a while. I have to say it's been it's been a long time. Um, with all the draws that we've had this season, this was a very exciting finish away to Newcastle, but. Uh, I think you have to say, definitely not our best performance, and uh, I'll get to that in a moment, but just looking at the lineup, we started with, again, Mohamed Toure playing as the striker, front three of Dukali, Blackwood, and Oliveira, Oliveira on the right, Dukali on the left, uh, Juan De and Luis Dorigo, the two holding midfielders, then a back four of Kido playing at left back, Jakobsen and Trat, the two centre-halves, speak more about him in a moment, and Lopez in his comfortable, natural position of right back, Gauchi in goal, um, now, the lineup, you can say what you like about that and whether um, he could have gone with a slightly different lineup, considering that uh, we had the players out who, unfortunately, we had to do without. Those being Craig Goodwin, Isaias, and Stefan Mork, the captain, of course, and everyone expected it to be his last game. But could Carl Veard have tinkered with this lineup a bit? I think, in hindsight and retrospectively, he'd agree that he probably should have, considering the start we made. One of the worst starts, one of the worst halves this team ever put together. I've seen us lose 4-0 to Melbourne Victory back in like 2009, playing better, genuinely playing better football than we did against Newcastle Jets. The only saving grace we had was that Newcastle were just so rusty, having not played for six weeks, that it basically played into our hands because they couldn't finish us off. We go uh, into half time at nil all, then they score a very good goal, it has to be said, but Jacob Tratt uh, at fault for this goal and he's made a lot of mistakes so far this season. So was he again at fault for it on this occasion? I think he was. He just doesn't get close enough to the Newcastle striker um, who had a really good game and uh, better Mikel Ledze, the Georgian, the Georgian striker rather, um, should be commended on uh, how good that finish was, but Tratt just gets nowhere near tight enough to him, and it speaks to all the mistakes that Tratt's actually made this season. He's made a number of glaring and obvious uh, errors, and not all of them have led to goals, but um, you know, you've got to start asking questions at some point. There are other options there, so um, I'd like to see whether uh, Tratt gets a bit of a rest, and whether that does anything for us defensively uh, in the next couple of weeks, but uh, just 
looking at this performance, I think we can comfortably say the worst ever performance that we've turned into a win by far in our history. We've never robbed a team like we did uh, Newcastle the other night, so it was very pleasing to see from that respect. Uh, uh, it's really inspired me, this win. I mean, it's it's got me up and about, and I've never been looking more forward to a game than the one I am uh, for this Friday night against Sydney FC, and stay tuned for a preview on that one as well. But um, I think this has just restored hope and and inspiration into all Reds fans, this win. And um, I just think that positive positivity considering that this win has catapulted us at least temporarily into third place is back and um, I haven't felt it since sort of the midway point of last season when we were on track for a sort of top four finish which never eventuated but um, I'm really really up and about after this win Um, now are we becoming the comeback kings in the A-League at least for this season I think you have to say that we are Um, we came back against Brisbane Raw we've come back against Melbourne City twice we've come back against Melbourne Victory Um, you don't want to poke the bear at the moment the bear being the team in red and uh, it's very very exciting to see us playing with with such a courageous kind of outlook despite going uh, down in games which hasn't always been a characteristic of Adelaide United teams in years gone by so I think it's something that uh, you know it's really something that we have in our armor this season and um, I'm looking forward to seeing us maybe do it a few more times and and stun and shock a few other teams so Comeback Kings, Adelaide United, who would have thought we'd be saying that about this team this season, considering that most fans tend to have the view that we haven't really recruited all that well. Um, Now, Hiroshi and Brook, both absolutely integral to this win. Uh, They came on, they influenced the game. Uh, Obviously, Hiroshi, the um, the the match winner in the end, coming off of his head. Lockie Brook, the architect, um, uh, and really just changing our outlook going forward. I think, uh, you know, Carl Vitt's got to find a way to get both these guys fit as quickly as he can. Where exactly is Lockie Brook going to be best here? Because we don't have that number 10. Yes, there's talk that one's coming in, but uh, we don't have that reliable sort of number 10. I think Brook, by his own admission, would say he's better out wide, but uh, he's versatile too. So I'm interested to see what Carl Vitt's going to do with Brook, but the main point here is that he needs to get him and Hiroshi fit as early as he can because... You saw what happened without both of them starting in that first half against Newcastle. We should have been absolutely rinsed. So um, he's got to do something there to get them on the park and firing as as quickly as he can. But I just want to ask the question, Hiroshi, there's fans kind of, you know, quite prevalent on social media who are getting around the meme culture and calling him the hero and everything. Look, we haven't seen that much from him. I think he's a good hold-up player. He almost could be the kind of striker that we've longed for since Van Dyke in the way that he's built. He can finish well. We know that is not disputable. Gets in good positions, creates chances off his own back, which I really like in a striker. Um, but you kind of have to play one way to him. He, he's a target man, and, and that's the only way you can really play to him. So... I mean, hero, we can't really call him a hero yet. Let's see how this season unfolds. For sure, if he if he gets sort of seven or eight goals, we can make that the conversation and, and surely get him signed up to a longer-term deal with, with, you know, there's every possibility that that could happen. But right now, calling him a hero, I don't know about that. Maybe as far as individual accolades go for this season, you could kind of morph him into into having that label, but... Let's just call the breaks, um, call the Jets and and see sort of how far he can go for us. Um, But uh, look, it's exciting. Um, And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see him hopefully score more goals because I think, you know, when we take a consensus out of the fan, uh, you know, opinion, it was very polarizing. And I don't think a lot of fans were that optimistic about him working out. So it's good early signs. Now, um, I found it quite funny. We had to pay a fine after this game for accumulating too many yellow cards. Can't remember the last time that would have happened. And geez, you'd expect it to be against a victory or a Sydney FC in a crunch game. Newcastle Jets on a Sunday night. <laughs> we get more yellow cards than we pretty much ever have gotten, um, or at least in the last few years. We actually have to pay a fine to FFA, um, which I find quite bizarre but um there you go that is the rule and uh i found that quite a trivial little um point to take out of this one um now it was a gritty win 
but gritty wins are the best wins. And um, we really dug deep on this occasion. And, you know, even in Gombau teams and more teams of the past, we haven't seen us dig really deep like this. We, we got it a few times in the Kurz era. The Bake era, meh, maybe one or two games right at the start. But we haven't really seen this for a while. Uh, you could argue maybe there were signs of it in the A-League hub. But, uh, I mean, look, this was... This was a real, real brutal game, and uh, we dug extremely deep. I think, you know, one game that springs to mind is actually the Jets' main rival, the Mariners, when we uh, kept coming back and we beat them 3-2 at home around a year ago, almost, I'd say. I think it was last February. Um, That was, you know, an example of of digging deep, but I think we had a lot of fortune on that day, and uh, against Newcastle, we really created our own fortune, and just these... These uh, sucker punch goals, really just getting the better of a tiring Newcastle team. And man, did we deserve that win. I'm just sopping about. Um, spoken about Jacob Tratton, whether he should uh, you know, keep his place in the team. Why is Josh Cavallo not playing? He or he's, he's a good player on the ball, I think. One of our better dribblers, um, particularly when he's in space. And um, it's just a bit hard for him at the moment. Like He's been sort of shoehorned and regarded by many as, as being a fullback, but... Kiddo's doing pretty well there now, and we seem pretty organized as far as fullbacks go. So how do you really uh, utilize Cavallo as best you can going forward, I think is a dilemma that Carl Viet has. Um, but I just want to see more of him because um, I'm really excited by what he can do. And, you know, this has nothing to do with his, you know, profile at the moment, which we know he's, it's very high. He's, he's um, really got very good stocks going for him at the moment off the pitch, but I'm more interested in what he does on the pitch, and um, I'm looking forward to him being more and more involved, and um, I hope there's some way that he can be shoehorned into the starting 11. Um, a great win, though, all told, and um, I'm just so keen for the game against Sydney FC on Friday night. Look out for a preview of that airing tomorrow evening on Purebred Reds. But uh, thank you to our sponsor, Soccer Lock. It's been great bringing you this review of our game against the Jets. We're starting to do a few more of these quick-fire reviews now rather than just the informative kind of drip-fed, long, drawn-out previews that we have become accustomed to doing. So uh, it's been great bringing you this one, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks again to Soccer Locker. Thanks to Flow FM for having us. And uh, go the Reds. We'll see you Friday night at Cooper Stadium.